Uh, thank you very much to, to the organizer for inviting me. Uh, and uh, I would like to start saying that I appreciate this initiative and um, I am um, uh, personally, I'm a big fan of uh, promoting good pharmacovigilance practices. Um, and I'm happy to see that experience from all around the world is shared into this um, uh, event, into this conference by various speakers. And uh, I think there were um, fantastic um, uh, presentations before me. I'm, I will try to, to um, uh, stand to, to the same or to, to raise the same standards that they were uh, presented before. Um, indeed, the, the topic that I was um, uh, kindly asked to present is about single management across the, the, the world. Um, but I also understood um, after the disclaimer that I should present uh, briefly what is the, the status of the pharmacovigilance in Switzerland, where is the country that I'm based on and I'm uh, working from this location. So I will just briefly um, give you a, a glance at the the agency website, Switzerland, like many other countries, has a, um, a drug agency, which is called Swiss Agency for Therapeutic Products, Swiss Medic. And you see the link to their uh, homepage here. Um, the agency it's, uh, is well established and it's an important voice in the, in the general uh, choir of, of um, medicine agencies across the world. Um, they, of course, they, they have a dedicated chapter to pharmacovigilance and they describe all the activities that they are doing. Starts with, with case reports, aggregate reports, signals, um, um, quality complaints and activities, pharmacovigilance and resumization activities specific to, to, to this area. Um, they are also, I would like to mention that they are a big contributor to the um, WHO safety database with BG base. All cases received by Swiss Medic are transferred to the BG base. And also uh, that they are uh, trying to, to keep the, the, the pace with, um, with the progress. So they move also to the electronic vigilance system to use of the gateway and of course the, the E2B standards for uh, case transmission. Um, you will find information on their webpage about all areas, um, pharmacovigilance for medicinal products, for devices, for vaccines, or for advanced therapeutic uh, medicines. In general, Swiss Medic, it's following or it's, it's, um, it's applying the same uh, standards like the EMA, like the European Union, and uh, while they have their own local regulations those are very similar in many aspects with uh, with the ones from uh, from the neighbors in eu and they are collaborating with not only with eu but with other agencies too and you see here a snapshot from the ema webpage where they indicate the level the agreements and the level of collaboration that they have with switzerland uh, in this respect there is a very strong collaboration in terms of good manufacturing practice where they actually they have a memorandum of understanding where they accept the results of the inspections done by the other parties that's a mutual recognition of the inspections um, that's to to spare resources but also because switzerland is the 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 homeland for many pharmaceutical company and has and has multiple uh, manufacturing facilities board um, but it's not all um, Swiss Medic, it's also collaborating with other therapeutic agencies. And recently, MHRA has joined this access consortium. Uh, and um, this is a group uh, made by, uh, by Australian Authority, Singapore, Health Canada, Swiss Medic, and now MHRA. And my educated guess will be that they will become an important voice in the, in the arena uh of um, uh, agencies uh, and probably they will be at the same level with the the three big ones um, fda ema and pmda from japan now moving to the to the topic of the the presentation which is about signal management yeah of course swiss medic also has uh, guidance and and um, it's performing 
themselves, but also they are asking the market authorization holders with products licensed in Switzerland to perform this activity. But where this started, I think that the, the, the SIOMS uh, 8 group um, publication about the aspect of signal detection and pharmacovigilance was establishing a sort of a common language or a basic language when we talk about signal management in general. And this language was taken over or was imported and used then by various authorities across the, the, the world. And um, yeah, the, the, the process described in, in, uh, in uh, this document, in this book, it's actually uh, it has in basic steps detecting. You have to detect first the signal, then you have to analyze it, to assess it, and then you have to draw some conclusion and based on that to do recommendations for actions and communication. That's pretty much, the, in, in simple words, the essence of signal management process. And of course, in highly regulated environment like we are all of us, we need to document all these steps and all the activities related to, to, to the signal management process. But who is or who should be doing signal management? And yet, WHO, it's of course one of the, the groups or the organization which they are performing signal management. Start, of course, with signal detection, and they are doing also certain assessments because they are not an, an, uh, empowered to, to take decisions. What they do as a result of these activities, they are doing recommendations. So if you are interested to find out exactly what they are doing, how they are doing, please visit the Uppsala uh, webpage and um, try to, to go through the WHO newsletters, uh, which are available free of charge on the webpage of WHO, and especially the section about signals. There you will find not only periodic publication of the signals which were detected and analyzed by, uh, by the Uppsala group, by the WHO, but also you will find methodologies. And that's, you know, they are making use of the, probably the biggest safety database in the world, VigiBase, where I know that also India is sending, um, and many other countries in the world, they are sending their cases through. And they use also methodologies which were um, change and then the, um, um, they were evolving in time, uh, making it better and better every time. Um, however, they are doing recommendations and they are sending their recommendation first to the uh, medicine agencies or, um, that are responsible for the products involved. If they will find a signal with a product that is available only in, in um, Asia, they will send that information only to those um, agencies. They will not send it to FDA or EMA, which if the product is not approved in these territories, they, they, they can do nothing about that information. Or might be just for their knowledge, but they cannot act on it. However, the process of signal management was actually described uh, at, the, at its best uh, in the legislation which was made available in the European Union. So you see here the, the European Medicine Agency uh, guideline on good pharmacovigilance practice, module 9. Um, the first uh, version was um, published in 2012 when it was the, the, the release of the new pharmacovigilance legislation in EU and actually has imposed a standard for signal management that is unparalleled, was not yet matched by any other organization or other agency in the world, upon my knowledge. There were many other agencies that were inspired by this and they were also um, uh, transported similar processes or guidance in their own national legislation. And as such, you know, the, the Arab countries and uh, the community of independent states uh, are also following a very close uh, guidance for signal management. This guidance was updated um, in 2017 and starting with 2018, market position holders in Europe, they had been asked to enhance their signal detection activities by using 
data collected in Eudra Vigilance, which is the safety database for the European Union. And you see here, and you have the links uh, to these guidance documents. By now, eight years after the, the issue of the first revision, and two years after the, the revision one, um, most of the companies or every company in Europe should have a process and a procedure for a signal management in-house and should be able to follow on this guidance list. This was checked during inspection and if you go to the MHRA blog, you'll find some of the results and the findings regarding signal management. That was not in the focus in the first two, three years. Then the number of findings started to increase and of course there were critical findings if you don't have a process or an SOP about it. And now recently those are in the range of uh, major or many of them minor because they are just tweaks or, or um, uh, small changes that needs to be done to have improvements in the process. But most of the companies, they have now a robust signal management process in place. Um, FDA also, actually based on the the um, uh, the, uh, the code of uh, federal regulations they are obliged to do themselves that's by the way valid also for ema ema was doing signal detection signal management even before the, the 2012 but they just maybe not call it like that they will continue to do that after 2012 and they put that obligation to use eldra vigilance on the market holders only in 2018 but FDA is doing it since forever and still nowadays there is no obligation for the license holders in US to do a signal management or to call it like that. They need to do post-marketing monitoring of safety. Um, and of course, signal detection is part of that signal management. They call it like that when they talk about themselves and what they are doing. And they are publishing the results of the, their activities on their website. And I recommend that you should screen it regularly. To, to see what kind of signals they are identifying. They work with the fires database, with the buyers for the vaccines, but also they have access to the Sentinel system, which you know has uh, access to electronic health records of more than 10 million patients. Um, in Japan, there is no consolidated guidance like you have seen in the EMA, uh, Good Pharmacovigilance Practice Guidelines. But of course, they are also performing signal management and they are asking the market transition holders to do it it's just that has a little bit of different names and they rely um, a lot on the spontaneous system but also on using the um, the data from early post-marketing phase vigilance programs that's a mandatory program for any new product approved for the japanese market in which actually you have an active collection of the safety information and of course reporting to the authorities and analysis of that data. Uh, it's in a form of sort of a equivalent in Europe might be maybe a post authorization safety study. And now they have also access to electronic health records of some university hospitals. And they are, um, you see, um, if you go on their page, you will find those projects and you can do some drug utilization, some past study, dedicated past studies in those electronic health records databases. Now, if you go to the, to the process per se, the first step is signal detection, and you have various sources. Of course, your own company database, which contain um, uh, individual cases, but also you go through the periodic review of various, various listings, including or culminating with the writing up the aggregate reports, the SUR, PSUR. And you document some of these activities also in the risk management plan, and you should not ignore product quality complaints, special situations, and other um, um, reports which they are not containing a, a medical adverse event. You know, they contain um, you, if you talk about interceptor medication error or potential medication error, those didn't even happen. If you talk about some quality, product quality complaints, those are malfunctions uh, or, you know, um, device related, but they didn't impact yet the patient. So there, they will not really meet the definition of signal, which is an association or a possible association between a drug and an event, an adverse event. 
but you might want to qualify like that just to be able to put it in the same process of detection, assessment, and, um, and action on it. And of course, now recently, Eudra Vigilance was added as a sort of a mandatory for companies involved in the pilot, while the use of fires or DigiBase are still optional at this moment if you want to use a bigger data sets to detect or to verify some of your hypothesis in the signal detection process. But signals can come from your clinical data, ongoing clinical studies, um, from literature, from class information, or might be detected by other organization before you do, and then you will have to verify on those signals by drug. Yes? Is there any access to some uh, institution? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? I don't, don't disturb this. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I would, I'll just continue it quickly. Okay, um, so then the, the, the steps in the process are, uh, from the European perspective, are very clearly indicated in the guidance and you should have a process which is touching base and is documenting all these steps that you see on the on the screen. And now there is a trend to move this process and to try to use the same terminology and the same steps also in during the clinical trial. So for a product which is not yet approved in any market. And here there are some suggestions what you can do and how we can do to map the, the post-marketing process to the clinical development environment. And do not forget that if you confirm a signal after detection, if you confirm it, uh, so after you went through the validation and then the, the sort of a preliminary analysis, then that means that there is enough evidence to support a causal association between your product and that particular adverse event. So then you should call it an adverse drug reaction and that needs to uh, end up in, in uh, some other documents or to be communicated further. And of course, you have to document all these assessment and activities in the signal assessment reports. Later on, that information then needs to, will have an impact, usually because that's a risk that you are um, identifying. Um, if it is important enough, you probably will have to work on your risk management plan and for sure label and if you still have clinical studies, protocol, informed consent, and so on. And please do not forget, even if you refute a signal, so at that moment there is not enough evidence to demonstrate the causal association, but you will have to continue to monitor that particular uh, refuted signal because once you get enough evidence, you will have to proceed to the assessment and then to confirm it. Um, now, what I would like to point out is that the signal detection as we are doing it, nowadays it's a reactive activity. We wait for the evidence to gather or we um, to hit us. Now, there are some steps like asking us to look in Eudra Vigilance um, that will qualify the process as being more proactive and especially if you start to look in other databases and maybe in some electronic health records to look for signal there, so to do signal detection in other spaces than your own safety database, then you might call it proactive. But I think that the target is to go to predictive signal detection or predictive pharmacovigilance science. We need to be able to find out who will get what and then to imagine ways how we can prevent that to happen. And I hope that technology will help us. And um, the left side, artificial intelligence, I would prefer that one than the right one. Um, but also we need to look at all these progresses, organs on a chip, uh, wearables, uh, collecting information via intelligent pills or exploring real-world data um, that will be now available and we should make use of it to move towards predictive pharmacovigilance. And yeah, but don't forget that patients should be at the center of all our work and activities. So predictive, but still 
patient oriented patient centric that's the, the the future that i would like to see for pharmacovigilance and signal management with that i thank you very much for your attention and i'm available for questions thank you